The movie opens up when Joy was kid, her life was very happy. She lived with her parents, her grandma, and her stepsister, Peggy. She also has a best friend named Jackie, who is always there for her. Since childhood, Joy has had a dream. She wanted to create a new masterpiece. When Joy grew up, she met a handsome man, Anthony. This Venezuelan man has a hobby of singing. They later married and had two children. But in the end, they had to divorce because Joy couldn't deal with Tony's laziness. Even Tony couldn't afford to take care of his kids. Tony has always dreamed of becoming a famous singer, so Joy finds it hard to bear all their household affairs alone. Despite this, Tony still likes Joy. Even after the divorce, he still lives in the basement of Joy's house. Joy's parents are also divorced. Joy's father left his family and remarried another woman. Since the divorce, Joy's mother has been depressed. She is just busy watching soap operas on television. One day, Joy finds her unique creation of a dog collar. The necklace is different from the other necklaces. But it opened up Joy's old wounds, because her creation had been claimed by another company, because she was too late to patent the item. At the time, Joy was working as an airline booking agent. But her work did not last long. She was fired because the company was downsizing their employees. Joy's problems get complicated when her father, who is married to another woman, gets divorced again. Joy's father then returns to Joy's house and wants to live there. Joy is surprised that her father has to stay at her house. In fact, there is no place for his father. In addition, Joy's mother post-divorce problems have not fully recovered. When Joy's father just arrived, he and Joy's mother immediately got into an argument until the father broke some things. Sorry, honey. I don't like this. I... Even so, Joy still accepts her father and asks him to live in the basement with Tony, Joy's ex-husband. In the basement, Tony was practicing singing. Seeing his ex-father-in-law coming, Tony didn't like it. So they argue. Joy had to take a tissue roll to border Tony and her father's sleeping area. A little flashback. Joy and Tony meet at a party. On the show, Joy was mesmerized by Tony's performance while he was singing. They continued to talk. Tony shared his obsession with becoming a famous singer. This makes Joy even more amazed, because she feels that Tony's life is not like her monotonous life. It makes Joy fall in love with Tony. And since then, they dated and then got married. Rudy, Joy's father, did not like Tony since the beginning of their marriage. At Joy and Tony's wedding, Rudy messes up the party. Not only that, Rudy also opposed Tony's obsession to become a famous singer. Rudy thought it was just bullshit and wasting time. One night, Joy meets Jackie. She told her various problems that occurred in her house. A few days later, secretly, Rudy joined the matchmaking agency. He, who feels lonely, is finally met with a rich widow named Trudy. Meanwhile, Joy's mother is panicking because the drains in her room are clogged, so the water gushes out. Rudy and Trudy plan their first date. In that meeting, they felt fit and decided to have a romantic relationship. To celebrate it, Trudy invites Rudy to go on her private boat. Trudy also asked Rudy to invite his family to come along. The next day, while they were having fun while drinking red wine, suddenly the boat tilted slightly and Joy accidentally broke the glass. Joy then cleaned up the broken glass. But when she was ringing the mop, her hand was injured by the glass shards. Joy then behaved strangely. People there were confused by what happened to Joy. They assumed that Joy was exhausted. When Joy fell asleep, she suddenly had an idea. She even felt that she met little Joy who had the potential to create something new. Little Joy reminded adult Joy, if for the past 17 years, she has wasted it. Joy then wakes up and suddenly asks Tony to move immediately, because they are divorced and it is not good if they still live in the same house. Joy also said the same thing to her father. Joy asks her father to move immediately because her father is divorced from her mother. But Rudy refused. So, Joy made an offer to her father. Joy asks her father to help her borrow money from Trudy. Joy hopes Trudy will invest in her business. Then, Joy immediately poured her ideas into pictures. After Rudy chatted with Trudy, Joy was then invited to explain her idea. Apparently, Joy will have the idea to make a mop called the Miracle Mop. A mop that is not squeezed by hand, but using a mechanical lever. Even the mop can wring itself out. But they were still confused by Joy's explanation which was still in the form of an image. So, Joy had to make it first, with makeshift tools and with the help of her father's employees at the workshop. After that, Joy went back to explaining to Trudy and her father. But to get investment from Trudy, is not as easy as imagined. Trudy wants to know how smart Joy is in managing her business. Trudy asked Joy a few questions. First, where Joy used to go to school. Second, what achievements did Joy get when she was at school? And the third question, 
If in a room there is only herself, her business partner, and a gun, would Joy want to shoot her business rival? And, Joy answered all those questions. She also answered the third question, that she would take the gun. After that, Trudy is finally ready to invest her money as capital for Joy's business. Then, Trudy invited Joy to carry out the production process. Joy started producing her mop. After that, Joy tried to sell it and offered it to every store that sells household appliances. Joy sells her mop for $20. But some stores refuse it. She was even insulted and expelled. Even though Joy's product is the first mop designed to make it easier to use. But in business, Joy's mop was considered unprofitable. The owners prefer customers to buy it $5,100 times, rather than customers buying $20 but only once. Therefore, Joy tried to sell it herself in the supermarket parking lot, accompanied by her daughter and Jackie. But no one has bought it yet. And she was kicked out by the security. No, 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 we're, we're leaving, we're leaving. You Until will be prosecuted. Would, but when I, 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 I won't come back, but you don't have to take my stuff. Seeing Joy's struggle, Tony felt sympathy for her hard work. Then, Tony invites Joy to meet his close friend, Neil Walker. Neil is a person who manages television stations and home shopping events. In his office, Neil asks Joy to present her product and demonstrate how the mop works. At first, some of Neil's colleagues seem to laugh at Joy's invention. But they try to give Joy appreciation. And after hearing an explanation of Joy's products, Neil was interested and asked Joy to produce 50,000 mops to sell on one of his television programs. Hearing that, Joy was very happy. Can you make 50,000 of these mops by next week? Yeah, I think so. In fact, she was very amazed when she saw the sales on the television program, which managed to sell a product of more than 25,000 units. Everything, everything, look at it against me. Now watch this. Now. You need this. Watch the calls, come on. Watch them. Calls. Calls. Go over 20. Those are empty seat standards. Those are leaving. When they can't call through, we gotta keep them watching. Neil then encouraged Joy, if her product could also sell that much. After that, Joy decided to borrow some more money from Trudy. At first, Trudy refused because Joy still had unpaid debts. But after several hours of deliberation, Trudy asked Joy's house to be used as collateral. And in the end, they agreed. Trudy lent money to Joy again. Then, Joy immediately produced the mops according to the amount requested by Neil. Long story short, all of Joy's family gathered to watch Joy's products to be advertised on television programs. They really hope it sells well. But after the product was promoted, none of the customers were interested in buying it. Joy is very sad because she has spent all her money on her business. Then she called Neil and asked for compensation, because he had told her to produce 50,000 units of mops. But in the contract, it is not written if the remaining items that are not sold will be completely replaced. After going through negotiations, the company will only replace one third of its capital. Even so, Joy did not give up at all. She went to Neil's office to ask for one more chance, and she herself would promote her product in the television program. At first, Neil doubts Joy's abilities because she is not used to being in front of the camera. But in the end, Neil agrees with Joy's request. Then, Joy was ushered into the dressing room for makeup, just like a presenter. But Joy is uncomfortable with it, and she wants to appear as herself. She feels more comfortable with the way she is. Then, the home shopping event began. Joy looks nervous. She was silent and unable to say anything. It made Neil panic. But suddenly, a call came in asking for the mop. And as it turned out, the caller was Jackie. She pretends to be a customer to lure Joy into talking about her product. Instantly, Joy spoke fluently. She promoted the mop well. And unexpectedly, Joy's product orders reached 47,000 units. Family over. I can't. I. I am a mother of. Yes. yes. Oh my God. This one is gonna be all in the business. Joy is feeling very happy. In fact, the order does not stop there. The orders continued to grow until a total of 95,000 units of mops were ordered through the event. But Joy's happiness is accompanied by sad news because Joy's grandma died. This made Joy very sad because only her grandma who really loved her all this time. Joy is closer to her grandma than to her parents. But now, when Joy has succeeded, her grandma has left her for good. After her grandma's funeral, another problem came. Joy got the news that the vendor who supplied her mop material, suddenly increased the price unilaterally after seeing the very good sales rating on television. This made Rudy very angry. He then sends Peggy to take care of the matter without Joy's knowledge. Rudy said that Peggy wanted to be involved in Joy's business. But Peggy makes Joy's position even weaker. Finally, Joy had to visit the vendor. But there, 
She did not meet the owner of the factory. Joy only met with the manager. Joy protests to the factory manager about the price being raised by the factory owner without her knowledge. After negotiations, the factory owner did not want to lower the price. Joy then wants to see the production machine to prove the truth of the reason the price went up. But Joy is not allowed to do that. Joy felt suspicious, then she went to the toilet. And accidentally, she found a ventilation hole that was big enough. She entered the hole and found it connected to the production room. Joy was shocked when she saw that her work had been secretly patented by the company. Then, the company said that the patent belongs to them. They even sold the product without Joy knowing. Then, they called the police and accused Joy of breaking through without permission. Until finally, Joy was arrested. But then, she was released by her father. Joy wants to take this case to court. But in vain, because at that time Joy lost legally. She faces a royalty claim for every mop she sells. This condition makes Trudy and Rudy angry, because Joy's debt keeps piling up. Joy's condition is getting worse, because Rudy also blames Joy. He didn't realize it was his fault. He sent Peggy and made things worse. But Rudy thinks Joy has lost Trudy's money. So, Joy was forced by Trudy to sign a bankruptcy statement so that Trudy would not continue to lose. And Trudy cut off the investment relationship between them. At first, Joy refused because she still wanted to try to maintain her business. But because of pressure from various parties, finally Joy wanted to sign the bankruptcy statement. By signing the letter, the cooperative relationship between Joy and her investors is officially ended. Even though her condition is getting worse and no one wants to support her, Joy still hasn't given up. Joy cut her hair as a sign of change. Then, she studied and observed civil law, copyright law, and patents. Based on her analysis, she found detailed differences between her design and the design patented by the company. Joy also found facts about the date of the copyright registration of the product. It turns out that Joy's work was patented much earlier. It was when Joy first borrowed money from Trudy to start her business. With the documents and the results of the analysis, Joy went to see the owner of the company. In a hotel room, the owner of the company comes and bullies Joy. The owner said that he could have killed Joy and no one would know, because people would think Joy died by suicide, because she went bankrupt. However, it didn't scare Joy. Casually, Joy explained the results of her analysis, that there was a difference between Joy's mop design and the company's patented design. So, Joy has no obligation to pay royalties. Joy also explained that she had already patented her work. Therefore, the company could be prosecuted with cases of fraud and also theft of ideas. Hearing Joy's explanation, the owner of the company was frightened. Then, he asked for peace and would return Joy's royalty money along with interest and fines. Joy stated that she would not proceed this case to the law, as long as the owner was willing to sign the documents that Joy had prepared. After all the problems and obstacles are over, Joy is now a big businesswoman and continues to create various works. She also always patents her work. Joy with her children and also her mother moved to a bigger house. Joy also takes care of her father. Neil Walker is also successful. He becomes Joy's partner and business rival. However, they maintain a good relationship with each other. Adversaries in commerce. And friends. Yes. It's nice to see you. Thank you, Neil. Even though now, Joy is rich, she never forgets her struggles. She likes to help other people and always respects the other entrepreneurs. Later, Tony and Jackie became Joy's business advisors.